Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to version 2 of C++ Crash Course. Now in this episode of the series, we're going to be looking at references and pointers in C++. Let's go ahead and get started and open up ref and point.cpp. So, a while ago when we talked about variables, we said when we had a statement like int a is equal to 5, what we're really doing here is we're asking for some memory, enough memory to store an integer, we're going to refer to that memory uh, as a, and then we're going to set the contents of that memory equal to 5. Now there may be situations where we actually want two variables that refer to the same piece of memory. So in this case, we have a piece of memory that stores an integer, a. I may want another variable that looks at this, that's a reference to this exact same piece of memory. And so when I do that, I create a reference. Sometimes this is also called an alias. So it's an alias of a, or it's a reference to a. And I can do that by doing int and b is equal to a. So this is just saying that b is going to be a reference uh, to a, or it's going to refer to a. So you know, this may be a little confusing at first, but this will be cleared up when we start talking about a's value and address, and then b's value and address. So when we're talking about a's value, we know that we set a right here to equal 5. So that's intuitive. We should print 5. Now when we say address, and we do this ampersand a in this context, a lot of times the ampersand is referring to as the address of operator. So what we're doing here is we're asking, where is this piece of memory actually located? What's the address of this piece of memory? And so we'll print out that address. Now when we do b, up here we say that b is just going to refer to a's memory location. So b's value will be the same thing as a's value. It's just a reference. It's just an alias. It's a as another name. In this case, the other name is b. So when we look at the address, we already said that they refer to the same piece of memory. So we'll see that a and b actually refer to the exact same piece of memory. So a and b are actually exactly the same. We're just referring to the same piece of memory using two different names. That's kind of the fundamentals behind uh, references or aliases. So what would happen, or what would happen if we say set a is equal to 10? Well, we know that a's value will now be 10. We just set it equal to 10. And the address, of course, isn't going to change uh, as we had it above. Now, what's b's value going to be? Well, we already said that b and a, they refer to the same piece of memory. So that means b's value will now be 10 as well, because a and b are the same. They're just a different name for each other. And of course, the address is also going to stay the same, right? We haven't changed anything with the address. B still refers to A, so A and B's address will be exactly the same. So that's a little bit of a background on references. And we'll see in a later video um, some practical application of references, specifically when we start talking about references and function calls. So you may see something else when you're you know, looking around or learning C++, and that thing is pointers. Now, in a lot of modern C++, we try to avoid pointers, uh, and there's a number of reasons why we do this. A lot of it deals with um, safety and dealing with things like um, you know, allocation and deallocation of memory. So we, we try to avoid pointers a lot of the time, uh, but you'll probably see pointers at some point, especially if you're going on a place like Stack Overflow. Right? So let's discuss pointers a little bit. So when we say int and then this uh, star c, what are we saying here? So when we did int and b is equal to a, we're creating an alias. So b and a are exactly the same variables. It's just that we have a different name for each other. Now when we do say int pointer c is equal to and a, we have a new variable here. So this int pointer is saying, I want a variable c, I'm going to, ref but I want enough space to store a pointer. Now a pointer is just an address. So what we're saying here is that C stores the address of an integer, right? And that should make sense based upon the right-hand side of this expression. We're saying the address of A, right? So this int pointer here, it's a pointer to an int integer. It's the address of an integer. So C stores the address of A, right? But C is a completely new variable. Right. Unlike with a reference, references are just the exact same variable by different names. With a pointer, we have a new variable that stores an address. And so we'll see that when we print out C's value and we print out C's address. Right. So when you print out C's value, what we'll end up seeing is the address of A. Right. Because that's what a pointer stores. It stores the address of something. In this case, C stores the address of A. 
but we can also call the address of C, right? So what does this value mean? What does the address of C mean? Well, the address of C just means where is this pointer stored, right? So we know that, uh, you know, from up here, we know that an integer requires some storage. So when we printed out the address of an integer, we're printing out where that integer is stored. Now, when we print address of C, we're printing out where is this address stored, right? So C stores an address, where is that address stored, right? And so what if we want to access something from an address, right? So we just said that, you know, this in pointer C, what C stores is the address of A, but what if I wanted to access this A's value or access A's value from its address? Well, we can do this thing called dereferencing, and that's just basically looking up a value from an address. So I can print out the address by just call by just uh, printing out C because again C is a pointer, and then I can get the value at an address using this star C, right? And so this is often called in this context a dereference operator. So what we're doing is C stores an address, and when we when we do this star C, we're getting the value that's being stored at that address. So the value being stored at the address of an integer is going to be an integer. So we should see 10 here. So let's go ahead and uh, close out of this and we'll compile ref and point dot cpp dash o. We'll just call it ref and point. And now let's run it. So we see that a value, uh, a's original value is five and its address is this long thing. It's a hexadecimal number. So this is the memory address where this value is stored. And the address is 0x7ff, blah, blah, blah. And it ends in AB44. But then you see when we print out B's value and address, they exactly match A's. And that's because it's a reference, right? So they, they're both, A and B are exactly the same. They both refer to the exactly same piece of memory. So their values and addresses will always be the same. Now, when we update the value of A to 10, we see that it's immediately reflected by B because again, this value of 10 is being stored at this address of 0x7ff, blah, 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 down to B44 down here, which is the exact same thing as the address of B, right? A and B are the same thing. It's just a reference. Uh, so B is just a reference to A. Now, the next thing is we have this pointer right here. So C was that pointer that it created that we set to equal the address of A. So we're saying that C points to wherever A is located. And we see that the value of C is the address of A, right? So this 7FF all the way down to B44, we see that C contains that exact value. Now, when we print out the address of C, which is what we do next, we see that it's stored at 0x7FF, but this time at the very end, it's a B48, right? So it's stored uh, someplace else. Right? Because again, when we see the address of something, we're seeing the address of this pointer, we're asking where this address is being stored. That address is being stored at this new address. Just like 10 is being stored at this uh, address, blah, 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 B44 at the very end. This address, right? So this pointer or this address is being stored at 0x7ff E63 A1 AB48. And then if we want to dereference this address, so if you want to say what, the, what, what is the data at this address, this, uh, this long thing that ends in B44, well, we dereference it, we find that it's 10. Right? So that's some basic usages of uh, you know, references and pointers in C++ and a little explanation about how they work. In later episodes, we'll look at you know, when we start using pointers and references in terms of function calls and some practical applications of these things. But that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. As always, all this code can be found at github.com slash coffee before arch. So if you go to C++ crash course or github.com slash coffee before arch slash CPP crash course under fundamental concepts and then under uh, memory, you'll find this ref and point.cpp. So feel free to download this, take a look at it. And let me know if you have any questions. And as always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.